Hello everyone, this is my seven round NFL mock draft for the Indianapolis Colts using PFF's uh, NFL mock draft simulator. Uh, a few quick things before we begin. Uh, first of all, this is a GM mock draft and what that means is these picks and these positions and players that I take, that's completely on what I would do if I had Chris Ballard, if I was the Indianapolis Colts GM. It's not what I think he will actually, the players that he will actually take in any regard. Uh, the second thing is that sometimes I have a bit of issue pronouncing some of these players' names, so please bear with me. You can have a bit of a chuckle or a laugh if I really screw it up. I, I don't mind that at all, but uh, so, some of these names are... are, are um, I haven't heard anyone else pronounce them yet, so I, I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation. And if, uh, if an actual player from this draft that I've selected is, uh, for this simulation hears uh, a, a, bad, uh, a bad pronunciation of their name, I apologize to you. Okay, so let's jump right in. At selection 34, I took Julian Aquara, Edge, Notre Dame University. Um, the Colts, uh, it's no secret that they've been looking for edge players for a number of years now. Uh, Julian Okora, I, I'm, I'm up and down with him. He, he had a fairly significant injury this, this past year, but it's not something as bad as like, uh, like Tua Tagovailoa's injury. So it's not like a super, super uh, concern, but it is something that you have to take into consideration. He has really great athletic uh, ability and speed. His production is pretty consistent, but the, the, the thing with him is that he doesn't um, pop all the time. Uh, he has, I think, uh, a couple of uh, solid rush moves, but certainly that could be improved. And uh, his power is, is a, I would say, average, maybe a bit above average. Uh, for the Colts, for the 34th selection, I didn't see another player that I was super, super happy with. So I went with uh, Aquara. Uh, I, think, I think he'll at least be like a solid player, uh, maybe not a, a pro bowler or uh, someone who's, you know, super amazing. He's not going to be like a Dwight Freeney or anything, I don't think. I mean, don't he could turn out to be. I, I don't know exactly. But uh, I like him a fair bit, so uh, I decided to take him here. Moving on, selection 44. I took Jeff Gladney, cornerback, TCU. He's a guy that I really like a lot. Um, he's got nice... Uh, speed to his game. He's shorter uh, with shorter arms, so that is a bit of a concern. Uh, he's also uh, a player that I think you have to really fit with the, the coverage scheme that you're using. He's not going to be, I think, an amazing man cover. He's more of an off-zone player because that's what he, he did at TCU. I'm pretty sure, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the Colts... Uh, that's the scheme that they, they like to run, is uh, off zone more so. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they would actually select him because they tend to like uh, more uh, prototypical size players with uh, longer wingspans and arm lengths, and that's not exactly Jeff Gladney, but I think he would fit the scheme fairly well here. And uh, cornerback, almost every team in the NFL could use more cornerback help, and certainly the Colts. Uh, Next selection at 75, I took Tyler Johnson, wide receiver, University of Minnesota. Um, if you've watched any of my other mocks, you're probably sick of me talking about this guy already. Uh, so quickly, I'll, I'll just do a couple of things on him. Amazing route runner, amazing production, had some of the best yards per route run in, out of all the wide receivers in this draft. The concerns with him are twofold. First of all, the, uh, his speed is not amazing. He's probably, uh, he didn't run at the combine pretty, I would guess something like a 4640, which is even slower than someone like Elshon Jeffrey ran. Uh, I think he ran like a 45 or 455 
uh, coming out of the combine, and he was like a, a, a slower prospect. But anyway, uh, so he, so Tyler Johnson, he's he's slower compared to the other uh, wide receivers, and also there's a bit of some personality or or background concerns with him. I'm not exactly sure what that is because it hasn't been fully like illustrated or talked about exactly among the analysts but there's they bring up kind of rumors about uh some a bit of personality stuff i don't know exactly what that is but that that's something that i've heard about uh overall i just i think at selection 75 especially because the colts could really use some more uh wide receiver help uh, they selected paris campbell last year who i absolutely loved but it turns out that route running is actually really, really important uh, to becoming a an, an least average uh, wide receiver in the NFL. And I think that's why uh, Campbell is, uh, along with the fact that he had some injuries, of course, uh, didn't do anything in his uh, rookie year last year. So anyway, I selected Tyler Johnson. I think the value and fit is too good to pass up here. And at 75 I think you need to take at least a little bit of risk with players. I'm not talking about huge risks like with Ja'Kai Polite, who was like a massive red flag a couple of years ago. I wouldn't have taken him in the top like 150 or 200. Uh, I don't think Tyler Johnson's risks are nearly that egregious or insane like that. So I think he's a good, uh, excellent value here. Uh, moving on at selection 122, I took Devin Duvernay, wide receiver, University of Texas. He's a slot-only guy, a little smaller, has good speed, but the the risk or issues with him is that he has uh, limited route running ability. He's really only good on posts and kind of slants and things going um, like anything vertically. Uh, any of the route, or sorry, any of the routes that go vertically, he's I think above average at. Any of the routes that go diag or uh, laterally, something like a, like a cross, like a shallow cross, stuff like that, he's that that's not his game because he, he doesn't have like the, the straight line speed. It's much better with him than his side to side movement. He he doesn't necessarily get in and out of his breaks really really fast. So the, that's the knock or the issue with him. At 122, honestly, there wasn't really anyone else that I was in love with, and I felt like more wide receiver help, um, just just throw darts at the board and hope it works out, you know. Uh, at least he can run a couple of routes above average, and you can plug him in there and have some depth and competition. Moving on, at selection 160, I took one of my favorite players in this draft, Josh Love, quarterback San Jose State. You might not have heard about this guy. Um, there's not a lot of tape out there on on YouTube. It really only his highlights from San Jose State. But what you look at is a guy that really has very, very accurate, deep passing ability. And uh, he, he played in, uh, of course, not anything close to like the SEC competition wise in the conference that he played in at college. But he was super productive, has just an amazing ball. Look, look at the accuracy and arm strength and touch that he has on deep balls. It's better than, like, I would almost rank uh, that ability for him, like, second in this class to Joe Burrow. The, 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 this guy can really sling the ball well. So, and with Philip Rivers only on a one-year contract, he's, like, something like 38 years old. I think it would uh, behoove the Colts not to at least address the QB position with at least one selection here in this draft, especially because this specific draft, I actually like a couple of later round prospects a ton, and Josh Love is my favorite one out of the group. Uh, let's uh, finish it up with the last two selections. 193, I selected Alton Robinson, Edge, Syracuse University. And 197, I took Dane Jackson, cornerback, University of Pittsburgh. Uh, the best way to sum up how I feel about both these players is I watched their tape from YouTube and I went, eh, they don't suck. And 
uh, at this point in the draft, near the 200s, in fact, really after about 140, 130, um, <laughs> about halfway through the draft until the end of the draft, that, late, uh, that back half of the draft, all those players, I don't view them any differently than UDFAs, undrafted free agents. Tier-wise, talent-wise, unless you're getting some guy that slipped because of massive injury or personality concerns, you're not getting any any better talented player at 200 than you would with uh, a UDFA. Just look up how many UDFAs and how many players past like 120 actually make Pro Bowls and become decent average starting players. It's literally just about the same number of players every year. But, but anyway, I digress. Um, I took Alton Robinson because once again, more competition and uh, at the edge position is what something the, the Colts could really benefit from. And then also more cornerback depth and competition for that group, I think, w is important. Both of these players I'm not super high on. I'm not going to bang the board and be like, we have to take this guy versus another guy. It just felt like marginally these two players were a little bit better than the other available uh, people at the at this uh at the at their selection so okay well uh thank you very much if you've uh, made it the whole way through i really appreciate that and uh you have a great day